afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We've got time for a short video before we've got to go do some mixes, and we're going to be covering issues and uses. No, sorry, uses and issues with white cement. Beer, beer, beer. Did I do that right? Okay, concrete coffee talk. Coffee is terrible. It's it leaves a tangy metallic. It's not a concrete coffee talk. Oh, it's not. Which one is it? Video. A video. 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 So, um, uses of white cement. I like to focus white cement um, more on our architectural pieces. Uh, we have used uh, white cement for, uh, I guess, structural pieces or more transportation needs, especially with our glow in the dark or you know those light colored pieces. But more architectural, we call it the pretty side of concrete. Sorry, the puppy is eating some tape on the ground. So, no more, no more eating tape, baby girl. So, um, uh, white pieces uh, or colored pieces of concrete um, is where we normally use our white cement. Uh, and, and the way they make white cement uh, is by removing the paramagnetic alloys, those that gray substance. So in doing so, that is a, a very expensive product. Now they can take white cement and cut it with TiO2, which tends to be expensive, but also limestone fines as long as it's a performance and not prescriptive base cement. Um, but issues that you'll find with it, not only the expense, um, but especially for doing architectural pieces, uh, oftentimes there's issues with keeping the whiteness the same over time, and different truckloads will give you different uh, tones and shades of white, which can always be an issue, especially when you have colored pieces, or if you're going for a certain shade of white and you're in the middle of a job, all of a sudden you change up to a different shade of white that's going to have a negative impact, especially if it's a extremely expensive architectural piece. Uh, some of the other problems with it, normally when we're doing architectural pieces, um, uh, there's a durability aspect. Either we're doing it a pool, we're doing precast sections um, that can see heavy abrasive wear um, and, and, and heavy use, especially with food, uh, you know, uh, you know, oftentimes these architectural pieces are water features in restaurants, countertops, um, uh, uh, garden stepping stones or garden pieces, uh, uh, furniture pieces, and they see some uh, wear and tear from not only food, but from some pretty nasty environments, excessive water, excessive water with salts, fire, uh, ice, food stuffs. Um, so, and normally these things are made in precast environments and the precast environments, our expectation is we're turning those molds faster and faster so we can get more pieces out in an eight hour, 12 hour period. Uh, because when it comes down to it, a precaster is just a company that makes really good molds and can make the same mix over and over again to push out as many pieces as possible in a short amount of time as possible. And with that being said, you know, we oftentimes sacrifice durability, that longer life of those pieces, which you know, eventually they could just be replaced with another precast piece, but that is one of the issues that we see that I often see, especially when it comes to, you know, these beautiful places that, I mean, these gorgeous buildings, these high rises, these, you know, beautiful hotels or these, uh, you know, parks with, you know, specific custom pieces. Because we went through that precasting process with that beautiful white cement and turned it into a gorgeous color piece, we don't have that durability, and even though it's gorgeous, it doesn't last very long. So it has to be replaced or repaired, which is very, very difficult. So, how did I do? Great. Get out? Yeah. Like it. Let me know if I uh, motivated any questions, any concrete concerns. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ding that bell for notifications. Go, go, go! Be nice,